Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. I've been using Elementor OS for the best part of three years now, and while I gave a fair shake to KDE Plasma in the past, making a full dedicated video series about it, it's been a while since I used it in production. And I've been secretly using it on my new desktop, which I'll definitely make a video about, for a month now. So I think it's time we take a look at what I liked, what I disliked, and if I'm gonna keep using it. Skillshare is an online learning community that gets you access to thousands of classes to learn a new skill, master a new hobby, or just improve on something that you already know, real-world skills or otherwise. Learning about Linux, for example, is easy thanks to a bunch of courses on improving your skills on the command line, becoming a sysadmin, or just generally learning more about Linux's internals. Personally, I'm taking these classes on color correction in DaVinci Resolve. Skillshare is affordable with free account creation and your access to Skillshare Premium being only $8 a month. This gives you access to all the chapters in all the classes and offline viewing. Now the first thousand subscribers that click the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, so head over there and start learning. So to begin with, I used KDE Plasma on Manjaro for the past month. I customized the interface to my liking, emulating some kind of elementary OS layout. If you want to have this kind of customization, Linux Scoop made a dedicated video, which I definitely followed to make this, and I left a link to that video on the description below. So check it out if you want something that looks like this. It kind of looks even better what he did, but I didn't want to go to the trouble to do all of these customizations. Now let's begin with what I liked about KDE. And the first thing that really struck me is how customizable the desktop is. Now, I started using the default layout, but after a while I wanted to customize it, and I kind of emulated the layout of Elementor OS, but went a little beyond that. I created one that looks and feels completely different using Latte Dock. But apart from completely changing the layout, the number of small things you can change is just amazing. From how the task manager looks and behaves, to which notification icons you want to see and when, or the clock style, you can really change everything you want. Now my needs are pretty simple, but I like to get rid of small annoyances, like having too many notification icons visible at the same time, and KDE lets me do that. The default alt tab look wasn't really my favorite, so I changed it as well to a thumbnail style. I like my windows appearing at the center of the screen, because I'm not an animal, so I changed that as well. I wanted buttons on the left side of window decorations, and I could do that as well. I could list all options here, no, no, honestly, no, I couldn't, they are too many. But generally, if you see something you don't like in KDE, you can change it. It's that simple. Now, this is kind of incredible in and of itself, because whether you just want to change a few things that annoy you and keep the default experience intact, or if you want to completely create your whole new desktop environment and desktop experience, you can do that with KDE. There's nothing stopping you from creating something entirely different or just using the default layout and tweaking a few things here and there to remove the small annoyances that you have with it. Now, I also enjoy the widget system that you can add to your desktop. I added my video folder and a few system monitoring ones, but that's just the tip of the iceberg here. There are hundreds of widgets you can download from the Plasma, let's call it store for lack of a better word. From crypto trackers to different menus, clocks, docks, resizable browser windows, you can really create the desktop you want to use. Now that's always been one of the main selling points of Plasma, customization. And this get new stuff button is pervasive throughout the interface, whether it's application themes, plasma themes, icons, cursors, wallpapers, widgets, you name it, you can download some new ones from an online library in one click and use them immediately afterwards. It's super well integrated and it's a really nice feature that I enjoyed. It was also nice to rediscover notification icons, especially as they've been integrated in plasma. They all feel part of the same interface, which is pretty rare. Usually you get a disjointed collection of icons of varying shapes, sizes, and colors, but here they're all looking nice and similar, and I must admit I had missed them quite a lot on Elementor OS. Among the best ones, the Media Player applet is just fantastic, listing all your video or audio playing apps in the same place, so you don't have to hunt for them. The removable media applet is also cool, popping up when you insert something, so you can open the contents in one click. The ones you don't need or want to see can be tucked away in an overflow menu, which is also very nice. Now, having a full-fledged menu is also something that I truly missed on Elementor OS. You don't just get an app grid or an app list. You get access to your places, to your recent files, to your history, and also, more importantly, you get access to file search system-wide. Now, that's something that most of you will find pretty normal, but on Elementor OS, there is no dedicated way to search for files 
at the system level. You have to open a file manager for that. And having this integrated into the menu makes a whole lot of a difference. And please, Elementor iOS devs, if you're reading this, please integrate file search in your menu. It is sorely needed. Please. Now, another thing that I had missed was KDE Connect. I used it on Elementor iOS, but there is no way to really integrate it all that well, especially since the Elementor iOS notification system doesn't really support actionable notifications. So there was no way to answer messages or share files. So it was a glorified remote control. Now I get access to the power of a fully operational KDE Connect running on my Slash E smartphone, and it is amazing. I can do anything I want. It's just Apple levels of integration between your phone and your desktop. Love it. Now, of course, not everything is roses and rainbows, and there are some things that I really don't like about KDE. Now, the default theme in light mode is pretty bland and looks a bit old, especially the buttons. I'm using the dark theme, which kind of resolves the issue, but the default application's theme really needs an update, in my opinion. Of course, that's only an issue if you don't change it. Now, my main issue with KDE is the applications. Those are very inconsistent. They don't look or feel the same at all. On the one hand, you have apps that have really simple defaults and a lot of power under the hood if you need it, like Dolphin. On the other hand, you have applications that really want you to see every single feature, panel, and option available right out of the box, like the calendar. Now, Dolphin is a great example of how you can get an app super simple and still have a lot of power under the hood. By default, there is no menu bar, very few toolbar icons, and a simple layout. But if you live in your file manager, you can show a folder list, an info panel, and even a terminal. Now, that's what I'd like all KDE apps to be. A simple layout without too many panels. But for users who really need something more powerful, just keep the options to show more panels, more toolbars, the menu bar, everything. But out of the box, please make simpler layouts. It's really, really a better experience for somebody who gets used to your app to add features instead of trying to remove them because you don't use them. Now, there also seems to be a less sizable community of application developers for KDE than for GNOME or at least GDK applications. A lot of apps look pretty old, like K-Organizer or K-Mail. They don't look updated visually to look like something like Dolphin or Discover. I also couldn't find a to-do list application along the lines of getting things GNOME or Planner. And I couldn't find an equivalent of Audacity for the KDE desktop. Now, generally, all the smaller utilities, like a very simple one-purpose image resizer or file format converter, don't seem to exist on KDE. You have big monolithic applications with ton of options, but if you want a simple one-purpose, two-clicks application, then you're out of luck. Now, of course, you can always install non-KDE apps on KDE, and that's what I did with the GIMP, Planner, or Audacity. I also installed the GNOME Disks app, because for some reason, the KDE Partition Manager just wouldn't want to let me restore a disk image into an SD card, which GNOME Disk did in two clicks. Now, that's where KDE grabs the advantage again. It integrates GTK apps a lot better than GNOME integrates Qt apps. The fact that you can choose any theme you want for GDK applications under KDE is great, because it means that these things will look a lot better integrated and not feel so alien. Now, using KDE apps on GNOME or Elementor iOS is a weird experience. Those applications do not look integrated and they do not look native. But using GNOME apps on KDE is a more simpler experience and it honestly looks good, to the point that I was wondering if I could just run a Plasma desktop with GNOME apps behind instead of the KDE ones. Now, I praised the avalanche of settings before, and I'm not going to apologize for it, but it's also a bit of a hassle sometimes to find a specific thing you're looking for. The system settings have a handy search feature, but it looks for the category names and not the settings inside. If, for example, I want to know where I can enable the fact that I can move my window to an edge of the screen to move it to another virtual desktop, I was trying to type sliding, I was trying to, trying to type moving or virtual desktop, it only showed me categories that were named using one of these words, or that had subcategories that matched this request. The setting I was looking for is in screen edges, but it could just as easily have been in window behavior or virtual desktops. Now, these settings are awesome, but finding them, if you don't know where they are, can be a bit of a hassle. And that's about it for what I didn't like. Now, if I needed to conclude, I'd say I really enjoyed using KDE. Rediscovering the power of notification icons really well integrated with the system, rediscovering the power of a full file search in the menu, and rediscovering the power of KDE Connect really made a whole lot of a difference compared to my experience with Elementor iOS previously. 
Now I also rediscovered the power of having desktop icons. And no, I still think that having a desktop folder with tons of icons and files inside that are displayed on top of your wallpaper is a horrible user experience. It looks terrible, it's bad for file management, you're gonna lose or delete stuff, it just should never be done. But having a specific little window that is always visible on your desktop, choosing the folder that you want to display things is a great experience. And that's something that really should be done on every desktop environment. I know you can do it on Elementor iOS with the desktop folder app, but it should be the default, not just putting a pell-mell mishmash of files that you just stored inside of a folder and that are displayed with no consequence and no rule at all. It's just not good. Now, widgets are also impressive and they are really well integrated inside the panel, inside your desktop. They just add a lot of power and functionality. So to conclude, I'm gonna keep using KDE Plasma for a while, at least until Elementor iOS 6 releases, because that's probably what I'm gonna be willing to use when it's out, let's be honest, but I will definitely keep Plasma on one of my devices because it's an amazing system, super powerful, and I really enjoy using it daily. But that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this one. If you want to watch somewhere else than on YouTube, you can also follow me on Odyssey. I left the link in the description below. Now, if you want to help support the channel, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!